So some advice, I'm using this superglue power gel. I'm choosing a gel form to glue some things together for aquascaping this um, vase that you, I've been doing some videos about. And those who know what that's all about, they know. Uh, there's the regular form, not gel. Let it dry fully out, uh, let it curate before you uh, put water in. Some of the toxins, that are, some of the things that are toxic would come into the water. Even if it's just really seemingly solid set. Um, it's safe otherwise. It's actually safe to use this. People have said no oh, super glue is not toxic yes in many ways it is um but if you wait like two days maybe later than that even um in the presence of other beings animals it's who don't know any better then just nibble at it or put it in them put it in their mouth um over that time the certain names for it uh acrylate uh some weird name with acrylate um let's have a look cyano acrylate ethyl 2 cyano acrylate warning danger bond skin and eyes and seconds the gel outer layer actually hardens first before inner parts of this so you can still if you crack open that outer layer you still get some like jelliness the gel is still ready to curate um it will harden over time um because the, the outer layer doesn't completely seal off the inner layer and there's still like air that get into it um yeah rinse cautiously with water for several minutes be moved then uh, the, yeah, I mean, super glue probably bonds skin better than it does anything else. Be careful. But uh, I had some Java moss come. I've gone and bought a large jar for growing things, maybe mosses, other things. Um, but just filling that up. Tannins, filling that up to out of the bucket where the water was soaking uh, the um, driftwood and pouring that into the bucket. Um, about four buckets worth of driftwood. But now, you know, I'm getting some ideas here and there. I could always just siphon off the water if it starts to, the tannin starts to get into the water again and siphon it off into the bucket. Because, you know, the vase is higher than the bucket, so siphoning off would be easy, right? And, you know, I have four buckets or more tannins still coming out this wood. But each time it's done it, it's a bit slower to for the water to brown. The chemistry of the water, it's not dirty. It's like staining it. And it is at the micro, tiny microscopic scale, maybe even further than that it's it is um biological material is it is breaking down into the water it makes it slightly acidic as opposed to a more neutral um so a ph forget the actual number what it would generally do to um neutral water but it it would make it acidic I'll be doing separate videos on that pH testing kits um, for water quality. I think here, our water is hard. What that means is it's not so acidic, it's more alkaline. Our alkal alkalinity occurs when you have more minerals dissolved into the water. And you'll feel like on your skin a difference between these if you bathing one versus another you'll eventually get to know the difference 
Um, occupants, Neil Cardina Shrimp, which I will be keeping, are relatively short-lived, but they're prolific breeders. Anyway, so I do, if I do breed any, I'll be selling them on eBay. And uh, there's ways to do that with right packaging. Just like the, I've received scuds and uh, seed shrimp and java moss. The, that was all from eBay. It's all doable. I can buy fish occupants. I may be going for chili rosebora or ros, rosebora, however it's pronounced, fish. Because they're tiny and they're ideal for an enclosure like this. With a shoaling, so I can have about... I can probably get away with about 10 of those in this enclosure. 10 Neocardina shrimp. And 3 Octosynclus catfish. These munch on dead matter and things, biofilms and algae. As do shrimp, but shrimp, they are they? People kind of buy them thinking, oh, these would be good for cleanup, which is relatively... A, a fair argument to a degree, but they do require like a little bit more advanced foods than that. Don't just chuck them in and expect them to be able to find food easily anyway. Because, yes, it does look like they're eating all the time, and they are because of microscopic things that you are doing this. Because if you look carefully, they have those little pinches that look like little fans, and they're fanning them food into their mouth. It's microscopic. They, there are things called algae wafers. So here's a good measure. If you put an algae wafer in, and you got like 10 neocardinal shrimp, if over two days the algae wafer is gone, that's fine. If over two days there's still bits of it, then you're overfeeding, which is going to fail the water and cause things to get out of balance a little bit. That's a general rule here and there. But when this is uh, set up, the tank will be in a cycle. There's no such thing as actually cycling your tank. It will be in a cycle of one thing affecting another, but it needs to get past certain cycles to be at a cycle which my intervention will help maintain, the one we want to tweak and maintain for the occupants, not algal blooms and bacterial blooms which fell the water so got um some ideas yeah it's a bit dull today a bit dark here but um i haven't got the light in yet but i've put in the driftwood anyway and you see some java moss there some java moss here there's two bits of Moss, one there and one, one separate, one there. And what this moss do, tends to do is it, it does send out kind of extremely fine roots. You can barely see them to attach itself to things. Otherwise, you know, it just grow. And and you might think, well, put it in water. It's supposed to be submerged yes it will be and letting that curate still a little bit i'll be putting some water in anyway now from the jar from the bucket to the jar from the bucket to the jar from the jar to the enclosure or just pick up the bucket um generally just getting some ideas here and there for aquascaping I need sand, I need lava rock. Lava rock is on order. Um, sand is on order. Aqua soil is not on order just yet. And I'm pacing it out like this because I don't really have the money to get it all at once, but eventually you're gonna see this evolve anyway. If you do want to help, uh, there is links below for my throne where you can Chip in with the lighting, the another enclosure. Um, take your pick. I may add some aqua soil to the throne account. Could I, could I always do with some like spare, I guess. Um, 
certainly learning a lot about this is it's fascinating how to do it this specific way i've done close to actually it's nowhere near close to how i'm doing it now i think you try the low tech as much as low tech can be yeah um so that moss is okay actually as long as it's kept damp outside of water Yeah, but four, it may even be five buckets now where I put this into the bucket and it soaked the tannins into the water. And I'm thinking I may leave some of the stained water in now to fill this up and use some of that because it will help soften the water a little, just a little bit. But you've got to look at, is it too soft for the plants as well? The primary focus to begin with is the nutrition for the plants. If you get that right, things will be cycling enough for nutrition for microscopic organisms, bacteria, crustaceans like seed shrimp, scuds, daphnia, then neocardina shrimp, much higher up in the food chain, and fish also. Uh, the fish I'm getting are going to be like smaller than the shrimp that I'm going in anyway. Um, so two types of fish. You get your little catfish, little sucker fish. And these chili rosboros. Rose People go to the, these places where they see these for sale and they don't look, because it's still relatively young in the, in the sale. I don't mean that's recently introduced. I mean, their babies more or less when you see them for sale. And the color hasn't like gone through yet, but when it finally does, you get the very vibrant red that is like uh, neon red, like this red, and uh, contrast with bits of pink dots on the fins and a black bar across them. The beautiful fish. They feed on tiny crustaceans. A happy fish is a hungry fish. To quote Father Fish on YouTube, I think he's right. I mean, if if you find that you they're sick, uh, they're not. They go off the food. They don't tend to want to eat. Just because they seem ravenous when you put food in, it doesn't mean that you need to keep for putting food in until they don't can't be bothered to eat, you're going to pollute the water. Um, too many people have gone to this hobby and away from it and back to it and learned nothing. And it, it, that's the same with a lot of subjects that too many people don't know how a computer works and they expect people like myself is in the past. Is that, who does this work? Can you do this and can you do that? And it's like, you're shit up with the computers and only this and that. And it's like, learn how to use it. You don't drive a car and put no fuel in there. So, and or you don't, you know, generally, I mean, <laughs> even then people are that dumb. Um, so, you, you know, put water in your radiator, fuel in your car, oil changes, get your tires checked and all this. It's no different. You, you have a computer, you need to maintain it and learn how to maintain it for the best use for it to be fast and efficient, right? Having an enclosure with a bit of wildlife in it, you need to maintain it, how you maintain it to make sure everything is progressing fast and efficiently. It's the same for everything. Learn something. Take on responsibility of your ownership of your items. You know? And I understand the impatience, because when you see these beautiful aquariums, crystal clear water and the, and the moss and the greenery, it just looks beautiful. That's where I want to go with this. 
but you can't expect that to just come out of nowhere there's work gone into that hopefully once the hurdles have gone through all the work there's nature going to do the take over the rest of the work for me in a majority kind of thing i'll need to do water changes i'll do snipping cutting back the plants making sure the algae doesn't get unchecked too much um which will hopefully be kept down by some occupants anyway um just making sure the water quality is fine topping up the, the water just all these different things making sure the electrics are fine with water pumps because there will be a water pump that will intervene at a particular time of day but not all the time there's reasons for that there will be lighting that will come on and off in a cycle to certain times of the day so the plants get to learn what the cycle is relative to ambient light coming through the window anyway the plants will learn there's a certain light spectrum that comes from the led lights when they shine and there's a certain other bunch of spectrum that would come into the room and they will adapt to that come on the lights will be on a particular time of day so that when i come home i'll be able to enjoy a let up enclosure for some time that i'm here but also you know once i've gone to bed it goes to bed as well eventually they, you know, i've got some lighting in mind where there's a timer on it and they have a spectrum on the led lights it slowly transitions to a dimmer color and you get all the way down to the, the more red it's like a sunset and the plants will learn this cycle and you know there's ways to think around that with battery powered rechargeable battery powered i want it as you know i'm thinking is that possible because what if there's a power cut what if i'm away for a week and there's a power cut and you know i don't want to rely on other people to do things because you know my experience in life when you've got something that delicate is um or in or how is that it because it's used to a certain cycle and the cycle gets interrupted by people thinking that they're helping but they're not um i find that people complicate things the simpler they are and the more complicated they are they still complicate it anyway in my experience it's unfortunate that's not everyone but too many people and in today's world i think it happens because there's too much going on for themselves as well and they people panic and things are complicated these days uh where they don't need to be too much pen pushing and so on right which is partially why i'm stepping down at work with pen pushing and think and trying to think things through and all this i got a number of things going on in my personal life as well as i want this project going i can't my head will burst with information if i have to keep taking on too much information all the time but that's fine they're fine about it they're fine about me stepping down i said well i might step back up at a later point because uh fingers crossed if i get a certain inheritance from a certain family member then I won't be going back anyway but uh, if that happens i don't think it's going to happen any anytime very soon but if it happens yeah you'll see a lot more from me in product productivity with this channel there's so many things i would love to do you know when it was uh you know lockdown of covid i ran all that exploratory mines People were really liking the videos as well, some of them. To so many different subjects. Some theoretical physics. Um, some take on the history of the SR-71. The 
different takes on psychology, mind, uh, all kinds of different things, tech dirt, news, my opinions on that, all these different things that were really enjoyable to do. Because there was nothing else to do anyway. I had to do something. I need these challenges. I've always go nuts. You can't just sit and do nothing. All right. So we'll see where it goes anyway. See where this project goes. And this is certainly something that fits. Um, something I already know. And it's not going to be boring, I don't think. Because there's so many aspects to this hobby. That can be seen in different perspectives and different ways and different ways to do things which makes it more interesting and I could have a discussion about somebody else doing what I'm doing in a different way and vice versa and the pros and cons of each one right so there we go there's this variety here rather than picking a subject and it's the same old thing over and over and over um, yeah Certainly the other channel does need attention, but there's this kind of slow go with these articles in draft to go on the health focused um, blog that I have. So all of this, yeah, I do want to express like I'm not gone away. I've not stopped doing what I love the most. But I will be doing other things like sharing uh, videos about some crazy nutters body language definitely uh one in mind is Aaron Costello who's an utter mess utter morbid sad self-destruct destroying mess she really is and she knows it I think that she doesn't know what to do about it Thanks for watching anyway. Take care. I'm going to be filling this up. And we'll see how this gets darker over the days. If there's any tanning left in this. Um, there's a slight tinge and it stays that way. I'll leave it that way. Probably. And, you know, it, it's going to be have to be drained off anyway. Again, for aqua escaping and all that. And then filled back up afterwards with that. Peace out. Take care. Bye.